Here comes the Here comes the Here comes the Y'all don't really worry like that. Yeah. Here comes the no. Here comes the Hello and welcome to another episode of the Drop Goal Podcast. On today's episode of the Drop Goal Podcast, we are joined by former Swinton Lions player as well as the 2019 top try scorer uh, in the championship. He's known as the, one of the greatest young prospects in rugby league at the moment. It's Warrington's very own Sonic the Hedgehog. It's the star himself, Matty Ashton. Welcome to the podcast, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good myself, mate. How are you? Not too bad myself. Uh, glad to hear you are well uh, and I'm pleased we could get you on the show. Um so without wasting any more time, uh, let's get into the questions. So first off, uh, how would you rate your first season with the Warrington Wolves? Um, it's been very tough. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of ups and downs with um, COVID going on. It's been pretty crazy, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it started off really well, really strong. Um, had a good pre-season. Just really enjoying uh, mm-hmm. my time there. And then um, got an, got a um, hamstring injury that put me out for a while. It's that. That um, took a bit of a toll on me, but um, luckily, COVID got in the way and I didn't miss as many games as I thought. But like I say, it's just been a crazy year and hopefully next year we have, we go back to normal. Yeah, definitely. So, unfortunately, Warrington did not make it past the first round of the playoffs this year, uh, getting knocked out by Hull FC a couple of days ago. Um, what improvements do you think Warrington would have had to put in place uh, in order to stay in the playoffs and make the finals this year? Um... Well, that's a tough question. Um, maybe I think we just made too many errors on the night, which yeah. um, cost us. Um, watching it back, it looked like Hull FC just did the simple stuff right, whereas yeah. um, maybe we tried to do too much at times, um, which maybe um, took its toll on us during the game. Um, but we always seem to do the tough stuff. Yeah. We just don't do it but... Which yeah, definitely. Thought, yeah, um, yeah. They did, like I said, they did the simple stuff better than us. Um, mm. But yeah, we can't go. We, now we just got to go back to basics, I think, and look what we can improve on for next year. Yeah, hundred percent. So I'm going to ask you the same question I asked most of uh, the guests that come onto the podcast. Uh, growing up as a young lad, at what age did rugby league come into your life? Um, come into my life about when I was about six years old. All right. uh, my dad taught me to play um, down at Rochdale Mayfield. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've played ever since. My dad was a big, big Swinton fan. Mm-hmm. Funnily enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just been in my life ever since. My, all the family have always watched it. Um, every week it's been on in the living room. So, yeah, it's been ever since then, it's been part, a big part of my life. Definitely. Uh, and growing up as a young lad, what other sports were you interested in uh, in school? Um, always been interested in football. Yeah, uh, that was probably the main one. Uh, I, was, I was just never that good enough as all my mates. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was the only rugby kid in my school. All right. Uh, I grew up in a town a town called Awood. I don't think many people know what rugby league is, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, mainly football, and um, I uh, liked quite other sports. I felt like I was good at every sport, to be honest, like badminton and stuff. But yeah. rugby, was always, rugby was always the one I was going for. Definitely. Um, so some would say that your path to success in rugby league was slightly different compared to many other young players' way of things. Uh, what would you say was your biggest struggle when trying to make it as a professional rugby player? Um, I'd say my biggest struggle was getting noticed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had to go through, I went, went from Mayfield, amateur, well, I was still playing there at the time, I went for Hotwood All College for three years and played there, which was, he was, he was even playing against some some academy teams like, top, like at college level. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just took him, took him a while went to get noticed, but even then I don't think I was really noticed because I went to Australia and come back. Mm. Um, and, and luckily, I um, a good, good mate of mine got me a trial at Swinton and things just left from there. But uh, yeah, definitely say getting noticed was the hardest part. Yeah. Uh, so obviously your first proper club, uh, as you could call it, was the Swinton Lions. But earlier on in your career, you played rugby with the Mayfield community, like you said. Uh, what would you say could be done in order to support uh, in order to support more clubs such as Mayfield? 
Um, that's a good question. Um, maybe more, maybe more funding. Maybe. Yeah. Um, at Mayfield's one of the more well-off clubs in the community game. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of good people there running the club. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what could more could be done? Um, we talk about noticing players or just in general to build the game. Um, a bit of both, really. Obviously, like you said, uh, your biggest struggle was to get noticed, but obviously to build the game. Maybe, you... maybe in communities, build through communities, you don't know, not have many rugby teams in, in there, maybe. Yeah. Whereas, whereas me at school, there were nothing. There were no... Um, at school like mine, I could do no rugby, no nothing. Mm. It was just football oriented. Obviously, it's tough. But, um, yeah, maybe get more, maybe more scouts going to the games. Maybe um, I don't know if there's a lot of that going on these yeah. days. Because um, when I was playing, more of a case was just someone, or maybe someone spotting you from like one of your friends who have always been, who've always been scouted, putting mm. a word in. For or something like that, like, but that's, that could be maybe one thing. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, when playing your junior footy, were there any positions you liked playing, or were you just happy to get out on the pitch? Um, I, in junior, I was always, um, well, I played a bit of centre first. Yeah. Um, I played, well, the majority of it, I was a six, I was an halfback. Oh, you probably won't think that now, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I played... And then um, I didn't really start playing fullback till I was 19, 18, 19. And I played a couple of times there, and I think from then that's been my favourite position. Yeah, definitely. So earlier on in your career, you also spent a year in Australia uh, with the Giants over in New South Wales. Uh, would you say the Australian game is more developed um, compared to the English game? Um, yeah, I think you'd have to say so, 100%. But yeah. that again comes from funding, and obviously over there it's one of their top national sports. Yeah, well, yeah. well, you say we're we're pretty down the pecking order over here, as you say, and it's always going to be a struggle getting the likes of football and stuff like that, what what they're on. But I think the diff like the difference is they've got competition going on all the time. They've got even you know, like tag rugby competitions. Mm. Um, maybe it comes with like weather and stuff like that. It's a lot a lot easier to get around and uh, do stuff outside over there and stuff like you don't have to over here. You've got the full lights and astroturfs and stuff. We can't fall yeah. on grass. Whereas over there, they can play all year round, basically. Yeah, 100%. It, it is a lot more development, but I think we may be able to get there one day. Yeah, definitely. So over in England, obviously, like you said, rugby league is a minority sport, with football being the main sport. Compared to over in Australia and New Zealand, rugby as a whole is just a massive sport. Um, what would you say needs to be done in order to expand the game over in England uh, in the market, as well as drawing more attention for the fans? It maybe it just has to be televised a lot more. Yeah. Obviously, we've got we do do well. We are, I think, we are trying. Mm. Um, we are trying to improve it. Um, there's a lot. There probably is a lot that can be done, but with that much competition, I think they're doing the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. But maybe there could be some improvements, like, um, it's like say more advertisement over social media and stuff like that, and yeah adverts on tv and stuff mm. or maybe it's getting more big names to come and maybe it's getting put in, it's just the end of the day it's funding i yeah. think yeah if funding is the main thing like if you've got someone who's going to pump all the money into the sport mm. uh, someone's willing to do that then if you, you think you're just going to grow but it's just getting having that opportunity and finding someone out there who will do that 100 percent so on the topic of expansion, the RFL have tried multiple times to expand the game with teams from Wales, London, and most recently Toronto. Uh, with the news that Wolfpack will not be returning uh, to Super League next year, do you think that there is a more simplified route the RFL could take when it comes to expansion and new clubs? Um, maybe they could be. Like, I think London was a good, London's a good good um, good example. Yeah, uh, trying to expand the game down south. Um, maybe if they can get improve and get a, a few more amateur teams down there, so you've got coming fr- through the ranks, mm. um, I think that'd be a good idea. But um, like, even the French teams, I think, yeah, definitely, they're very strong. Yeah, uh, and for players as well, I know, I know it probably costs the RFF. They are the best trips. 
yeah, I went to lose yeah. in class. Like Toronto, that was I I'll never experience anything like that again, I don't think. Well I'm pretty gutted they they're not in there anymore. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like improving like it seems like it's London like you say and stuff like that. So I think more of that should be done. Yeah. Uh, so now many fans have been calling for a fourteen team Super League. Do you think this idea could successfully be implemented into Super League if done correctly? Um, yes, it hundred percent could. It's just getting the right teams in there, yeah, and picking the teams who are shown what they can do and shown the they've done everything that the RFL have said they can said they to to get in the Super League. Uh, there's a few teams that chant. I've deserved it for years, but never really got the rub of the green like other clubs have. Yeah. Is there any two particular teams you'd like to be moved up to Super League if a 14-team Super League was announced? Mm, if you had to pick two? Yeah. Uh, I'd say Toulouse, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think another team in France would expand would expand the game even more. And plus, I reckon they will be really competitive. This mm. is a good funding. Um, second team. Um, I think maybe like... You've got your London, who've obviously been there, done that, but maybe a team yeah. like Featherstone deserve the chance. Yeah. If they had to pick another one, just they, they've done the hard graft and obviously they got to the final last year against um, Toronto that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, maybe they should be given a chance. Oh, but you've obviously got, you've got a few in contention there. Mm. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd swing and get in there for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you debuted for championship side Swinton Lions back in 2019. Uh, playing in the championship for most teams means having a second job. Uh, when you were playing for Swinton, were you studying or working at all? And how did that work out with training? Um, I worked as a leisure attendant at the Village Hotel. Yeah. Uh, weren't too bad for me. I uh, did six twos most days. Mm -hmm. So I'd, just get, I'd get home, chill out. I weren't driving at the time. So I'd have yeah. to get lit. I was most pre-season was the worst. Turning up, not knowing anyone, because obviously I was on yeah. trial. Yeah. Freezing cold. Out. Luckily, I knew one of the lads, Mike Ratu, who were taking me. Mm -hmm. So, um, luckily, it weren't too bad. But I reckon it, for most part time players out there, it is a big struggle. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you most, go on, sorry. For most students, just to work like nine to five, like on, on site grafting all day, which yeah. a lot of them do, and go to train at night and play at the weekend, it is, it is tough. So, mm. uh, fair play. Yeah. Uh, so, your 2019, uh, 2019 season with the Swinton Lions was a tremendous break for a year uh, for yourself, uh, as at the end of the season, you were crowned championship top try scorer for 2019. What was it like winning such an honourable uh, award at such a young age? Uh, yeah, it was a bit overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, I think I uh, surprised myself. Yeah. Uh, anything. Uh, I, w it was, I wasn't expecting to achieve anything like that, especially in my first year. Mm. Yeah. I'm just, I was just grateful for all the opportunities I got there. Um, but, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, so you had a successful time in the Championship uh, and now you're playing in Super League. Would you say there's a noticeable skill gap between the two leagues? Uh, no, not at all. I, I wouldn't say. I reckon top and champ would uh, frighten any Super League teams. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, the skill level. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Probably needs to be a lot higher in the Super League, but there's a lot of players in that champ who could go step up to Super League and deal with it without uh, no issue. Yeah, hundred percent. So after a successful time in the Championship, you were signed by current team uh, Warrington Wolves. How did the approach come from the Wolves, uh, and how did the situation pan out? Um, I think it was just a phone call. Um, by uh, Steve Price. Yeah. Uh, just just let him know uh, he's interested in this time to keep, uh, maybe to keep what I'm doing. In yeah. The, in the um, in the champ. So, and hopefully something will come about. Uh, but luckily, uh, I'd already signed the deal with Swinton for yeah. the year after. So, um, luckily Swinton, obviously, uh, in negotiation with Warrington, let me go in the end. So, mm. I'll always be grateful to them. Um so, yeah, that's how I ended up at Warren. Yeah, so you decided to put pen to paper with the Wolves for, uh, for the 2020 season. Uh, what made you choose Warrington and were there any other clubs chasing your signature? Um, I heard there was a couple, but there were nothing ever concrete. 
So, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Warrington's two, the top four. I always said to myself, the top four club, especially Super League, ever coming for me, I'd just snap it up with both hands up. But obviously, Warrington's just one of the big teams. Yeah. Um, so, hopefully, I can keep improving there for now and uh, hopefully win something. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, this season with the Wolves, uh, it's fair to say that you've impressed many fans in the rugby league community. Although Wire lost the first game of the season, what was it like to pull on the Premiers and Blue for the first time, especially in such a big game? Oh, it was an amazing feeling. Um, I remember the day pretty well, to be honest. As a, I was, to be honest, I was that nervous. Um, yeah. I can't remember uh, speaking to anyone that day. Um, mm. Didn't really eat much. <laughs> uh, I don't think it really sinks in, so you're walking out for your warm-up. Yeah. Um, seeing all the Warrington fans behind the goal, and it just gives you goosebumps and just thinks, yeah. Uh, that excitement is rushing through your body mm. um, and just thinking about that yeah it, this is your moment you've just got to take it so but yeah unreal game and shame we didn't get the result but uh, I enjoyed it and I thought um, I showed what I can do yeah you definitely played good in that game uh, you were also hugely involved uh, in the Saints match where Warrington beat local rivals 19 to nil. it was such a loud atmosphere in that game would you say having no fans in stadiums affects the way that Warrington play um, I'd say it obviously does, but I, th- I, th- I say it affects every team in a, a different way because yeah. it's not just those playing with no fans; it's the team opposite our, our mm. opposition as well. So it, it's same for both, but obviously the, the Warren fans are massive. Um, the atmosphere they create is incredible, mm. so that's going to give you a, a big push in any situation. But um, like I say, it's, it shouldn't be a huge issue as other teams are in the same position. Yeah. So, we have to get used to that pretty quickly and, uh, yeah yeah so on the topic of no fans and coronavirus what did steve price and the club put in place in order to keep you and the other players fit and healthy throughout the cancellation of rugby league um we had a few zoom calls per week yeah uh, bit of a high intensity training but circuits which uh, kept us going mm. uh, i was injured for I mean, Majority of the lockdown, so I was doing my own rehab at home. Yeah. Like, stretches and stuff like that, that the physio gave me at Warren. So, uh, mm. but yeah, mostly it was just the Zoom calls, a few fitness regimes, keeping the boys going. Yeah. Uh, so you were involved in the playoffs game against Hull FC, being arguably Warrington's best player on the night, scoring two tries. Although the Wolves lost on the night and there were no fans allowed in the ground, would you say the playoffs bring more pressure to the team to perform? to perform well or do these emotions get pushed to the side to help stay focused on the game? Um, I think there's always going to be a higher expectation of you. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's do or die. Um, and I think every player knows that. Mm. Uh, unlucky for us, we, didn't, we just didn't get it right on the night. So there's no next week anymore um, to get to make it right. So uh, but there's always going to be that I had expectation you know, to do well because like I say if you, if you lose that's it your season's over yeah uh, so with Warrington's season now officially over uh, what do you think needs to be done in order to hopefully win the trophy Warrington fans have been craving for uh, such a long time now uh, we've just got to keep grinding um, keep training hard keep uh, obviously going big pre-season um, just simple everything up uh and yeah, just keep that. Just keep hoping, and just keep um, like, like, like you say, it is the dream to win the Super League. Uh, yeah. Just got everyone. Just got to keep belief. Keep that belief in us that we can do it. Yeah. Um, if we keep that belief, then I'm sure we'll we'll keep we'll keep working hard, and we'll keep we'll get there. Yeah. Would you say in the next few years, realistically, that Warrington should be aiming uh, to take home that trophy? They should be aiming every year. Yeah. At the end of the day, we we spoke about it. We should. Should we talk about winning that every year? That's that's the goal. And if you're not talking about it, then that's shouldn't be there. Should if that shouldn't be a, that big of a club. Yeah. Uh, so to finish off the podcast, as always, we'll do some quick fire questions. Uh, so let's get started. Question one: Which position do you prefer, full back or on the wing? Full back. Question two: Would you rather win a Challenge Cup or a Super League Grand Final? Super League. Question three, which do you prefer, McDonald's or KFC? KFC. 
Question four. Who works the hardest in the Warrington training camp? Hardest trainer. Um, Joel Philbin. I'll All say. right. Uh, question one. Question five, uh, if you had to choose one team from the Australian Origin Series, which would it be, Queensland or New South Wales? New South Wales. And finally, question six, which player would you most like to have played with from the past or present era? Billy Slater. All right, so before we finish off the podcast, do you have anything you'd like to say to any of the young listeners who are trying to make it in the world of rugby league? Um, if I'd say anything, I'd just say never give up. Yeah. No matter how, how hard you work, um, how hard it takes, it's always going to be that chance. It only takes one phone call, one one person watching you. Just keep working hard. Um, do everything. Like, if you want, if you do want, if you want it enough, you'll. I'm sure you'll get there. So yeah, that's my message. Definitely. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you back out on the pitch next season with the Warrington boys. Uh, and hopefully they bring home that trophy that every Warrington fan craves, as well as the players, I'm sure. Uh, as we say, it's always our year. Uh, once again, thanks for joining us today. Uh, hopefully I can get you on the podcast sometime in the future. Cheers and all the best. Perfect, mate. Thank you. Here comes the, here comes the, here comes the. Y'all don't really worry like, oh, yeah. Here comes the, oh, here comes the, oh, here comes the. Y'all don't